Hello friends, you are watching Engineering Chemistry and welcome to this video, Airbag, the life-saving chemistry. The term airbag may be misleading, unlike a typical bag inflated with air. This life-saving device is filled with nitrogen gas. In this video, we will see how does airbag work in car, the chemistry behind airbag, and finally we will see airbag safety guidelines. When it comes to road safety, it is not viable to rely wholly upon seat belt. In fact, high impact collision tests have revealed that seat belts cannot prevent passengers from hitting the dashboard and for this reason airbags are encouraged in vehicles. Crash test showed that for an airbag to be useful as a protective device, the bag must deploy and inflate within 40 milliseconds. Airbags are designed to act as a supplemental safety device in addition to a seat belt. Installation of front airbags in new cars is mandatory now. Some cars go far beyond having dual to 6 or even 8 airbags. The first patent on an inflatable crash landing device for airplanes was filed during World War II. In 1980s, the first commercial airbags appeared in automobiles. Moving objects have momentum. Unless an outside force acts on an object, the object will continue to move at its present speed and direction. Car consists of several objects, including the vehicle itself, loose objects in the car, and of course, the passengers. If these objects are not restrained, they will continue moving at whatever speed the car traveling at, even if the car is stopped by collision. This force from the steering wheel causes injuries to the body in an accident. If there is no restraining device like airbag or seat belt, then body hits the steering wheel instantaneously. Hence the force is large and injuries are severe. But if there is a restraining device like an airbag, it reduces the force on the body and resulting in fewer injuries. In the first case, we can see force is distributed over small area. Whereas in the second case, force is distributed over large area. As per the research, it has been found that there is significant higher reduction in moderate to serious injuries for people using airbags and seatbelts together than for people using only seatbelts. There is 26% reduction in driver tests attributable to airbags among drivers using seatbelts. Let's see components of airbag. An airbag is comprised of four parts. The first is the gas generator. It is a pyrotechnic mixture in the form of granulates, encompassing a nitrogen generating substance and silicon rubber as a binder. The main component is sodium azide. Sodium azide is a stable salt at ambient temperature, but it results into an explosion above 300 degrees Celsius and generates a nitrogen gas. The second is polyamide bag. In a car, first there is an airbag control unit. It is connected to the steering, a crash sensor, an inflator, and an airbag. The bag is of a thin nylon fabric which is folded into the steering wheel or dashboard or more recently the seat or door which is designed to tear open under the force of the bag inflating. Since more distance typically exists between the passenger and the instrument panel, the passenger airbag is larger and requires more gas to fill it. Third part is electronic sensors. The sensors can be found at the very front of the vehicle or near the frontal foot area. The airbags in the vehicle are controlled by a central airbag control unit. If a rollover event is determined to be imminent, side curtain airbags are deployed to help to protect the occupant from contact with the side of the vehicle interior and also to prevent occupant ejection as the vehicle rolls over. In vehicles equipped with a rollover sensing system, accelerometer and gyroscopes are used to sense the onset of a rollover event. The ACU monitors a number of related sensors within the vehicle. The fourth is microprocessor. The microprocessor contains a set of crash pattern data within it. The microprocessor is continuously analyzing brake patterns, shocks, acceleration and speed impulses all while simultaneously comparing those values to that of crash pattern data. When an accident occurs, 
the microprocessor is able to calculate how critical the collision is and deploys the airbag but only if the speed of the vehicle is greater than 20 miles per hour at the time of impact. The goal of an airbag is to slow the passenger's forward motion in a fraction of a second. The sensor is the device that tells the bag to inflate. Inflation happens when there is a collision force equal to running at 16 to 24 km per hour. A signal is received that crash has occurred. The sensors receive information from an accelerometer built into a microchip. Once the requisite threshold has reached or exceeded, the airbag control unit will trigger the ignition of a gas generator propellant to rapidly inflate a fabric bag. Ideally, body of the driver or passenger should not hit the airbag while it is still inflating. Otherwise, the high internal pressure of the airbag would create a surface as hard as stone. A second later, the gas quickly dissipates through tiny holes in the bag, thus deflating the bag so you can move. This process, from initial impact of the crash to full inflation of the airbags, takes only about 40 milliseconds. Let's move to the chemistry inside airbag. Inside the airbag, is a gas generator contains a mixture of sodium azide, potassium nitrate and silica. A typical driver side airbag contains approximately 50 to 80 gram of sodium azide while the larger passenger side airbag contains about 250 grams. Airbag volume is generally 60 to 70 liters. The particle size of the initial reactants is important to reliable operation. The sodium azide and potassium nitrate must be between 10 to 20 micrometers while the silica must be between 5 to 10 micrometers. The inflation system uses a solid propellant and an igniter. When the car undergoes a head-on collision, the signal from the sensor ignites the gas generator mixture by an electrical impulse. Once the signal is received, sodium azide decomposes at 300 degrees Celsius to produce sodium metal and nitrogen gas. The airbag system ignites a solid propellant and creates high temperature condition necessary for sodium azide to burn extremely rapidly to create a large volume of gas to inflate the airbag in approximately 20 to 30 milliseconds. The bag then literally bursts from its storage site at up to 322 km per hour which is faster than the blink of an eye. The sodium metal produced in the first reaction is extremely reactive and hazardous. If it comes into a contact of water, it can lead to an explosion. The purpose of potassium nitrate and silica is to remove the sodium metal by converting it to a harmless material. The nitrogen generated in this second reaction also fills the airbag. But we know that the first period metal oxides such as sodium oxide, potassium oxide are highly reactive. Hence, in the third reaction, potassium oxide and sodium oxide react with silica to form the alkaline silicate glass. This compound is stable, safe and fireproof. The powdery substance released from the airbag is regular cornstarch or talcum powder, which is used to keep the bags pliable and lubricated while they are in storage. There are some disadvantages of airbags. Airbags deploy only once and deflate quickly after the initial impact. They are not beneficial during the subsequent collision. After deployment of front airbags, exit flap design of steering wheel and dashboard panel get damaged and required to be replaced. Although vehicle was not written off in an accident, impact could be the same. Further, dust-like particles and gases emitted during deployment of airbags could cause irreparable cosmetic damage to dashboard and upholstery. So, the minor collisions result in the deployment of airbags can be costly accidents, even there are no injuries and some minor damage caused to the vehicle structure. By looking at all advantages and disadvantages, there are some guidelines to follow. First is, don't sit too close to the steering wheel. Move your seat to the rear as far as possible while still reaching the paddles comfortably. Place yourself at 25cm away from your driver airbag. That gives you a clear margin of safety. Instead of your head and neck, point airbags towards your chest by tilting your steering wheel to downward position. Recline the back of your seat slightly. Due to reclination of seat, you may struggle to view the road. In such a situation, you can raise yourself up by using your car seat raising system or placing a firm or non-slippery cushion to achieve the same effect. 
The rules are different for children. An airbag can seriously injure or even kill an unbuckled child who is sitting too close to it or is thrown toward the dash during emergency braking. Children up to 12 years should ride at rear seat buckled up in a properly installed age appropriate car seat. Never place a rear facing car seat in front of an airbag. If you like my video, click on like, share and subscribe my channel. Also don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification about my new videos. Have a happy and safe driving. Thank you.